Good evening. Welcome to St. Joseph Church. Today we celebrate the 32nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please stand. Eternal Father, strong to save, whose arm has wave who bids the mighty ocean deep its own appointed limits keep go hear us when we raise our plea for those in peril on the sea oh Christ the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Father. And let us together, as the people of God, turn to Jesus, our Lord and Savior. 
And as we first call to mind our sins, so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. You forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. You feed us with your body and your blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on Amen. earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Resplendent and unfading is wisdom, and she is readily perceived by those who love her and found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known in anticipation of their desire. Whoever watches for her at dawn shall not be disappointed, for he shall find her sitting by his gate. For taking thought of wisdom is the perfection of prudence, and whoever for her sake keeps vigil shall quickly be free from care because she makes her own rounds, seeking those worthy of her, and graciously appears to them in the ways and meets them with all solicitude. The word of the Lord. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. O God, you are my God whom I seek. For you my flesh pines and my soul thirsts. Like the earth parched, lifeless and without water, my soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. Thus have I gazed toward you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. For your kindness is a greater good than life. My lips shall glorify you. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. 
Thus will I bless you while I live. Lifting up my hands, I will call upon your name. As with the riches of a banquet, shall my soul be satisfied. And with exultant lips, my mouth shall praise you. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. I will remember you upon my couch, and through the night watches I will meditate on you. You are my help, and in the shadow of your wings I shall for joy. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Jesus, bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with a word of command, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, console one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. The foolish ones, when taking their lamps, brought no oil with them, but the wise brought flasks of oil with their lamps. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight there was a cry, Behold the bridegroom, come out to meet him. 
and all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise ones replied, No, for there may not be enough for us and you. Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. While they went off to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. Then the door was locked. Afterwards, the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he said in reply, Amen, I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore, stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, finally, it's happened. I think they've finally counted finished counting anyway, all of the outstanding votes in the remaining states for the election. Looks like we'll have the second Pennsylvanian as well as the second Catholic president of the United States of America. I kind of like statistics, I'm a nerd like that, so I decided to dig into this a little bit. According to the national popular vote, the split was 51% Biden, 48% Trump. According to Montour County statistics, it was slightly inverted, 60% Trump, 60% Trump, 40% Biden. The Catholic vote, often giving the edge to one candidate or another, this time was split virtually 50-50. So about 50% of our country, approximately 50%-ish of our county, and 50% of our church, which likely means approximately 50% of our parish, chose the other. So where does that leave us? Divide it. Pretty much the same thing as things were before the election in our nation, in our state, even in our church. Looking into this further, even here at St. Joseph's, we find lots more divisions. The same. There are old and there are young. There are male and there are female. There are those who work for Geisinger and those who work for somewhere else. There are those from Danville, their whole lives, and there are those who come from other states or even other countries. Lots of divisions, and yet here we all are, in person or online, peacefully united as one at Mass. How is such a thing possible? Well, it largely depends on how we define ourselves in relation to others. Our culture, unfortunately, it seeks to pit genders and races, political allegiances, even different religions, against one another. But as Catholics, we seek to place ourselves not in a position of against as much as we do for or with the other. For example, the Catholic Church is both pro-life in the womb and pro-life in immigration. In other words, all people possess inherent dignity, born and unborn, native and immigrant. And the reason for this inherent dignity is because of the one God and Father of all who bestows it. This is how unity is possible. Not so much by exerting 
our radical and autonomous independence by which I decide I'm going to make up my own standards for my own life, and if you're against them, then you're other. But in humility, putting ourselves under a common and agreed upon higher power. As a country, we're supposed to be one nation under God. Fortunately, God has been gradually forced out of the secular world and the social scene. It's getting harder. However, as church, as the people of God, we know the truth that we are indeed under the almighty sovereignty of God. This wisdom is that which our society is increasingly lacking. It's the very wisdom of God that our first reading tonight speaks about when we heard, for she is readily perceived by those who love her and found by those who seek her. God is that very source of unity. But then how do we maintain that unity? I mean, we even look around in the church and we see thousands of different denominations. How? In one word, the Eucharist. In the words of Pope Francis, without the Eucharist, unity would lose its divine pole of attraction and would be reduced to simply human, psychological, sociological feeling and dynamic. Instead, the Eucharist guarantees that at the center there is Christ, and there is his Spirit, the Holy Spirit, to move our steps and our initiatives of encounter and of communion. The Holy Eucharist is a sacrament of unity because it unites the faithful more closely with Jesus and with one another. As St. Paul says in his letter to the Galatians, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free person, there is not male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Even our founding fathers and our nation understood this truth in establishing our national motto, e pluribus unum, out of many, one. It's only the grace of God that can enable a people to really live in harmony and oneness with one another. And as Catholics, the very source of that grace is available to us in the Eucharist, the very body and blood soul and divinity of Jesus Christ is meant to unite us together as one body for a sign to the world. How else could the church withstand the rise and the fall of so many republics and democracies and every other form of government throughout the centuries? My friends, soon many of us will be hoping to gather with loved ones for Thanksgiving and Christmas and to sharing a meal together. And as we gather, that meal is meant to unite us, to gather us as we enjoy the food together and conversation with one another, to draw us together as one. So much more the Eucharist, Holy Communion, because in the Eucharist, we become what we eat so that we can truly be that which we are. As church, we're literally the body of Christ. And the Eucharist, we receive the one body of Christ so that as church, we can truly embody the one body of Christ. Heavenly Father, through this holy sacrifice of the Mass this evening, I beg of you to grant our nation, our church, and our parish ever greater unity through your Spirit, divine wisdom, and through your very Son, Jesus Christ, the bread of life, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you.
But friends, let us now together stand and we pray together the words of the Nicene Creed and say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Certain of God's love and care for us, we now pray for our church and for the world. That all who minister in the church be leaders who serve and servants who lead. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our country continue to honor all who have given the ultimate sacrifice in the quest for freedom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick and suffering from COVID-19 and other illnesses, especially those who are hospitalized and dying at this time, may God grant, according to his divine will, grace in abundance to provide healing, comfort, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those encountering fear in the midst of this pandemic, especially the people of our parish and local communities, may the Prince of Peace fill them with lasting peace the world just cannot give. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the youth and young adults of St. Joseph Parish and School, and all those in our local area. May God give them strength, wisdom, and peace of mind and heart during these challenging times. And may the Holy Spirit guide us in seeking ways to effectively reach them with the good news of Jesus and his church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Dr. Joseph Moad, whom we pray for in a special way at this Mass today, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions in our prayer basket, as well as those we now mention in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also pray for all veterans who have generously served our nation, whether at home or abroad. We pray in thanksgiving. Let us pray to the Lord. And let us also pray for unity in our nation, 
that our elected officials may above all seek to promote the common good of society and those they serve. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we do not know the hour of our death. Until that day, we ask you to hear our prayers offered in faith in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion. Through Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity, and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might be the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy, that by the pouring forth of your spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our announcements this evening. Please note that Christmas script order forms are in this weekend's bulletin. If you're looking for a vendor that you don't see on the list, just call the parish office. Order forms are due back no later than December 1st. The Knights of Columbus will still be hosting their annual Thanksgiving dinner, this the 37th, on Thursday, November 26th, from noon to 1 p.m. This year, due to the coronavirus, there will be no sit-down dinner, but they will offer takeout and delivery of the full meal, including dessert. Well, that's good to know, including dessert. If you would like a meal delivered or would like to donate items, please contact Pete Taylor. More information is in the bulletin. St. Joseph's is once again helping to brighten Christmas for others through our giving trees. You'll have noted them in the St. Hubert lobby. Our gifts will benefit the following. 25 Danville area children, residents at Maria Joseph Continuing Care Community, veterans at Orangeville Manor, Birthright in Sunbury, and the missionaries of the poor in Kingston, Jamaica. We thank you in advance for your generosity. Details will be in next weekend's bulletin. And finally, the Diocesan Virtual Catechetical Conference is next Saturday, November 14th. There's a wonderful lineup of speakers this year. The conference is for everyone who loves or is interested in the Catholic faith. Register online on the Diocese of Harrisburg website Deadline is November 12th. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Amen. Our prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He hath loosed the fateful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth 